The purpose of this video is to go over the final paper instructions. By the about the fifth week of the class, you should have the first full draft of your entire paper written. Um, if you see right here, um, it says review final paper instructions. This is bookmarked to a section later down in the syllabus. And right here, there, there aren't much instructions here, but it basically says, um, you know, you will draft uh, the literature review. If you don't submit it, you get a zero for it. Um, and you need to pass the class with a C or better. But if you click on this one, see full outline, that takes you to a separate document that gives you um, a tremendous detail um, regarding the paper instructions. Okay, so at the top, it gives you the headers that are generally included in the paper. Um, an example like abstract, usually the header that you use for the abstract of the paper actually just says abstract. Um, introduction, literature review, those are the titles that you use. Uh, however, when you get to the headers within the literature review, you don't say header one um, or subheading. You would indicate something more specific like the causes of depression or, you know, interventions for depression, something like that. Um, the paper, it is required that the paper is 2,500 words. If the paper is not 2,500 words, it could be the most spectacular paper I've ever read in my entire life. You will still get a zero. Um, it is required because this is a writing class that you write a minimum of 2,500 words for the paper um, or that you write 2,500 words in the class. Uh, so that's the expectation, and that is approximately five pages single-spaced if you if you measure it out that way. So the first step really is that your job is to pick a dependent variable, um, a continuous dependent variable, you know, something like depression or anxiety or alcohol use disorder. Uh, th that would be a great dependent variable. And then you want to synthesize the current research literature related to that DV. Some of the things that you would include would be, um, you know, the intervention. What is at least one intervention that you have found to be effective uh, to treat this problem, this dependent variable or DV? Uh, there's also to don't overlook this. It's there's general paper instructions here. If you open up this document. This gives you a long list of things that you should know, but you may not, and I continue to add to it um, as we go, but definitely go over that. Um, that's really more about formatting. Uh, in general, you follow APA with maybe two exceptions. I want you to single space the entire paper, single space the entire paper. Um, you can add one line of space before a header, so like after a paragraph and before a header, that's typical, um, but you do not put spaces between paragraphs. The other thing is with the APA for the reference list, you follow APA, um, but there, there's this complicated thing called a hanging indent, and some people can't do it, and that's perfectly fine. If you can't do the hanging indent, uh, don't worry about that. So um, your literature review will include uh, a title page, an abstract, an inter introduction, the actual literature review, again, all the headers and subheaders, the implications, conclusion, and a reference list. So that's the outline of the entire paper. Um, and as I skip down here, I'm going to skip through. You can read all of this, what's, what should be in the abstract. Uh, I'm going to go to the introduction here. So this is about 500 words or less. Um, I want you to read the Wenberg article as an example of what an introduction looks like. Um, a lot of you will come to me and say, can you show me an example? I've provided articles in the class that can show you what it should look like. Um, in general, you should frequently use about three scholarly articles per every significant paragraph. Um, the information that you write in this paper should not be your own ideas necessarily. It really should be um, you should be synthesizing the research literature. The things that are absolutely non-negotiable is you need to define the dependent variable. If your dependent variable is like depression or alcohol use disorder, use the DSM-5. That's the easiest thing that you just sort of summarize what the DSM-5 says about um, those uh, issues. You want to report the prevalence. You want to uh, identify the population and the setting. So an example might be 
My DV might be depression, my population is college students or students, and the setting would be a co in college or a dorm. You want to explain why this is important. You also want to cite the Code of Eth Ethics, the NASW Code of Ethics. You also might want to cite the CSWE competency behaviors, um, and there should be references for these. Again, it's not just your thought on it, but you want to explain why this topic is important for social workers. Why should social workers care about it? Paragraph two, you really talk about the intervention or the IV. So again, you want to have at least three scholarly articles that identify at least one independent variable that successfully treats the DV. So don't don't cite an article that says CBT doesn't resolve depression. You want to find an article that actually says that it reduces depression. Um, paragraph three is like a look to what else is going to happen in the paper. Um, and you can read more about what should be included there. But here we go. The introduction is paragraph one, two, three, very prescribed, very specific. And you want to follow that because the rubric will grade you on your ability to follow those instructions. Now, the literature review is much less structured. Um, the goal of the literature review is that you have headers, like at least three themes or headers that divide the literature into different subtopics. And again, a good subtopic might be the intervention. You can explain in more detail about the intervention. You could talk about the causes of the problem, consequences of the problem, variables that might be important, like maybe race or age or ethnicity, something along those lines, religion, sexual orientation. Those things might be more important, so you, you might be able to have a header there. Um, the other thing, too, is again, Every paragraph in the literature review should have at least three articles that talk about that theme or that header. If you can't find those articles, then it shouldn't be a topic. Then you don't have enough information. One of the big mistakes that students make here in the literature review is one, they don't synthesize, and I know that's a difficult concept, but two, they find one article that they like and they sort of write one paragraph about that article and then move on. So that's definitely not what you want to do and I'll I'll have more information on how to synthesize. Um, the implications uh, are again more specific. So the whole idea of that what the implication section is is what should be different as a result of the information that you now know. How should our practice be different moving forward? So you know you shouldn't say something like well we should just continue with what we're doing. Um, that's not, you know, an implication. An implication is how should it be different. So you want to name four implications, theory, practice, research, and policy. So theory might say, how should we think about the relationship between the IV and the DV differently? Um, practice, how should we interact with clients differently? Research, what are the gaps in the research? Did the research literature that you found, did it address all areas? Chances are it didn't. There's always some new area to explore. And policy, um, what's agency, state, federal, or federal policy should be added or changed or revised and how. And be specific here. Don't say policy should change blah, blah, blah. Well, what policy? A federal policy? policy? Should this be mandated? How are you going to fund that mandate? So you should think realistically about it. The conclusion sort of mirrors the abstract, right? So the abstract kind of gives you a general overview of what's going to be in the paper. A conclusion should also do that, and you can read kind of the specifics here of what that should look like. Um, finally, you have the bibliography. Again, um, everything should follow APA. Um, there are, you know, six primary things that should be included in every APA reference. Make sure that all of your articles follow that. Um, you're required to have at least um, 25 papers in the article that are published in the last tw uh, 48, um, no, 24 months in the last two years. Um, and if you don't have that, um, then it, that's a significant impact on your grade. So you definitely want to make sure that you follow that. Okay, thank you.